Hello, today I'm sharing with you my updated fall morning and evening skincare routine. Now the biggest question I get in the comments and the biggest question a lot of people ask themselves is do I need to change my skincare routine depending on the season? And as always, it depends. There's no hard and fast rule that says you need to change your skincare based on a change of season. It depends on your skincare concerns, it depends on your skin condition, and it depends on your environment. Here in Colorado, I have four distinct seasons. Some of them are shorter than others, but I switch up my skincare routines by season. Plus, I love trying new skincare products. I love reviewing them for you guys, and I also love trying products that you recommend and that you request that I review. So I have lots of reasons that my skincare routine changes throughout the year, but like I said, it's certainly not a rule. If you're happy with the skincare routine that you're using, continue on and definitely share it down in the comments. A lot of the products in some of the skincare devices in these routines are new to me and products that you requested that I review. This fall, I've been starting out my morning skincare routine with my Zip microcurrent nanocurrent device using one of their new plans on the app called Post Summer Skin. Zip has been kind enough to sponsor this portion of the video. Despite the use of sunscreen religiously and reapplying, I pick up pigment in the summer months like crazy, especially on the spots on the side of my face, along my brow. These are older pigmentation spots that are just seem to be triggered by any amount of sun and they do pop up. And in the fall, I'd like to help combat some of that discoloration with the topicals. And I'm so excited to be trying the new plan that they've added to the app called the Post Summer Skin. It's supposed to help brighten the skin and help combat discoloration. I'm on day six of this plan, so they have an eye treatment. So it's really cool because they incorporate some of their regular treatments into your full day plan, including a new treatment called Electric Tone. And that's the treatment that's going to help fight pigmentation. Because the Electric Tone plan is new to me and probably new to you, I'm going to read to you a little bit about the plan from the app. It's supposed to optimize discoloration and help brighten skin tone. The intensity level is two and the duration of the treatment is four minutes. You're supposed to see consistent and even tone and complexion uniformity. This is my fourth electric tone treatment and throughout the 14 days, it pops up every once in a while. What I love about the Zip App plans is it gives you a detailed outline of every treatment that you should do each day. It keeps me very consistent using my microcurrent and nanocurrent. Now you can just grab your zip and use it straight out of the box with the four minute lift plan. And I typically do that, but more recently I have found that life has gotten busy and actually beginning a plan, sticking to a plan each morning, including the days they have skip days. So you don't want to use your microcurrent every day. And the plan reminds you which days to skip. It reminds you which treatments to do. Sometimes there's two treatments, three treatments, and sometimes they're just a single treatment. So that's why I have been loving the app lately. It's definitely helped me stay organized and consistent using microcurrent nanocurrent. If you're not familiar with nanocurrent, nanocurrent is pretty unique to the Zip microcurrent device because it is the type of current that naturally occurs in our skin and it comes after microcurrent to help set the microcurrent in. Microcurrent is lifting, toning, and toning up those muscles to give us a more elevated, elegant look and a little bit more definition, whereas the nanocurrent sets it in. It's also working over time to help improve collagen and elastin production. So if you're looking for a microcurrent device, I have pretty much defaulted to the Zip because it meets all my skincare needs when it comes to microcurrent, in addition to the nanocurrent that it provides. So in my treatment today, I'm doing eyes, I'm doing, I believe it's jowls, so right under this area, and then of course the electric tone to help fight pigmentation. So I'm going to do my zip treatment. It's the first thing I do after cleansing. I use a bit of a mineral mist to dampen my skin before I start my zip program because I find that my gels go on more easily and I have to use less gel. This is the silver gel and I actually have 
a unique limited time discount code for all the gels. It's 25% off. And I like to make the extra expense on their gels if I'm interested in adding some skincare ingredients into my zip program. The basic gel is perfect for getting your zip done, completing the treatment, but they have three other gels, the silver gel, the gold gel, and the crystal gel. I have not tried the crystal gel yet. That's one of Penn Smith's favorites, and that is in the mail to me soon, so I'm gonna get to try that next. The reason I like to bump up my gel use into the little bit more expensive gels is because they have skincare ingredients, and microcurrent is designed to help driving some of your skincare ingredients just into the top layers of your skin so you can get the most benefit out of the skincare ingredients in each formula. I'm gonna speed the video up while I do the three minute eye treatment and the three minute gel treatment, and then slow it down and introduce the electric tone, which is new to me and might be new to you, for a total zip treatment plan this morning of about 10 minutes. start the electric tone treatment and it's a little bit different. You have to start the treatment by paying attention to the port because the head that's actually going to be working to brighten and helping reduce pigmentation is the top globe. So the bottom globe needs to stay in contact with the skin, but the top probe is where you're going to be targeting your problem spots. So mine are along the temple and upper cheekbone and along my brow. So I'm going to be always keeping the bottom probe, which is by the charging port in contact with the skin, but really focusing the treatment using the top globe. So that's a little bit different than a lot of the programs in here, except possibly the one that helps with problem skin. So I'm gonna start the treatment as always. This is syncing. You're going to hear fast beeps and you're going to target just the areas where you want some brightening, which will be different for everybody, and reduced pigmentation. You have two choices with this plan. You can stay in one targeted area, wait for your single beep, and move to another targeted area, but because my problem areas are connected, I just combine the two single areas, continue up and around my cheekbone, temple area, and brow, since those areas are connected. But it's completely up to you. You know where your problem areas are and where you need the targeted treatment. I'm going to towel off my zip gel, introduce my fall morning skincare routine, which is leaning to more nourishing products. As the fall comes in this area, it's drier and it's definitely harsher weather. Our winds kick up, the air is drier, and I definitely do a little bit of a switch for my fall morning skincare routine and fall evening skincare routine. Depending on where you live, your skin type, it all comes into play whether you decide to switch your skincare routine out or keep it the same. It's definitely based on environment, your current skincare problems at the time, and your skin type. So all of that comes into play to decide whether you're going to switch up your fall routine or not. You guys know how I love to try new products for you. I have two new products that you guys voted you wanted me to try in the community page. If you're not familiar with the community page, if you subscribe to my channel, which I hope you do, subscribe, like, and join the Beyond 50 Skin family, because if you do, you get access to the community page where I post sort of daily things that are going on in my life. I put up polls where you guys get to vote for what skincare products you'd like me to review. And you guys voted for a couple that you wanted me to try this fall. I'm also introducing a new anti-pigmentation serum in both my morning and evening routine that's supposed to address dark spots and discoloration in a unique way. The first step in my morning skincare routine is always to add a hydrating toner. I have very, very dry skin. You can skip this step if your skin is more normal to oily, but this helps me with maintaining my skin barrier, which is always subject to issues because of the very dry nature of my skin. So ceramides and the Laneige, this is their cream skin toner. This is actually one you guys recommended to me. Just pour a puddle in my hand, do my swirl and tap it in. 
This has ceramides. Now ceramides are nothing new in skincare. Obviously, CeraVe built a whole skincare line based on the concept of introducing ceramides into our skin. They're basically the lipid that holds our skin cells on the stratum corneum together. Kind of that brick and mortar concept. This is the mortar that seals in transepidermal water loss and helps with skin barrier function. I try to do my skin care from thinnest to thickest. So the next step for me is a vitamin C. Now, whether you use your toner or your vitamin C first, I honestly don't think it matters. This is the 20% L-ascorbic acid formula from Timeless. L-ascorbic acid is great for antioxidant protection, lightening and brightening, which we definitely want to do year round. My anti-pigmentation serum is a new one that I introduced during my haul video a few weeks ago. It's by Mother Science and it has the ingredient malasthasin. Mother Science has done several clinical studies that show that malasthasin helps with lightening and brightening dark spots. It's another way to help lighten skin as opposed to using antioxidants, as opposed to using l acid, as opposed to using Artret or gentle exfoliation. And I think the more ways we can help combat pigment, and this seems unique and very interesting to me, the better. So this is a thicker serum. So that's why it's the third step in my skincare routine. Now, if you're not sure how to layer your skincare, I did do a video on that and I'll link it up above. But one rule of thumb is thinnest to thickest. And I pretty much stick with that because it's easy to remember and it often works. If you get too many skincare products, I kind of try to keep my skincare products in the morning to about five because of course I'm adding sunscreen as the last one and then often doing a minimalist makeup routine. If I get too many more products, then things start to pill and slip and slide. That's why I emphasize to you guys to keep your anti-aging skincare routines fairly simple, around five products. It's always fun to try new products, but it's always important to remember to use the product up to really see if it's making a difference. I try to take before and after so that I can share this with you. And it takes me a while to get through products. It might seem like I'm always constantly changing, but really I use a product up for about a month, sometimes two months, sometimes even longer. So I encourage you to do that too. Pick your products wisely, use them up as long as they're not irritating your skin, use them up for the full one month to three months that the product lasts because that way you're going to know if the product is actually working. Introducing a ton of new products all at the same time and not really looking to see if they're making any benefit to the skin can be a little bit frustrating and you feel like you're kind of throwing money down the drain, especially when it comes to the next two products I'm going to introduce. This is by OneSkin. OneSkin came out about two years ago. I'm a little late to the party. This came in a bundle. It was gifted in PR. No obligation to review, but you guys voted that you wanted me to review their eye cream and their moisturizer. The key to this product is that it has a proprietary peptide. They also have done some clinical studies showing that this peptide helps reduce aged skin cells or senescent cells. I actually don't understand the science behind it. I'm going to be honest. I will leave a link to their website. Do your own reading. See if it's worth the expense because these are not cheap products and if they do what they say they do fantastic i've taken some before and after so we're going to see if this is worth the expense i do have a discount code if you love this product and you've already been trying it or if you want to give it a try i wanted to do this review for you to see if it does any real changes to my skin from what i've learned about peptides is sometimes they can be unstable and sometimes they're really just hydrators. As always, I'm a bit of a skeptic when it comes to miracle skincare claims, but I definitely am excited to try this. Their eye cream is definitely a cream and I like to put it under and over my eye area and tap it in, including along my temples where I get those crinkles. And then I'm coming in with their moisturizer. Now the moisturizer definitely has a scent to it. It's not a fragrance. It is just the scent of the product, but it smells like vitamins. And it takes me three pumps to cover my whole face. 
And then the residual I put on my neck, the back of my neck. Don't forget the back of your neck with your skincare products. It's one area, especially if you have short hair, that really goes unobserved when you're applying your skincare. This is a fairly creamy formula, definitely hydrating, great for all skin types. If you have super, super dry skin, like I said, you might want to add in a toner. I would say this would not be quite enough moisturizer for my very, very dry skin without the toner that I used in the first step of my routine. All right, I'm going to let this dry down, then I'm going to come in with my sunscreen of the day, which is going to be the Tatcha. This is the reformulation of the Silk Sunscreen by Tatcha. Love this mineral formula. It's the one I've been reaching for if I want a mineral sunscreen every day since I purchased it. Moisturizer soaked in a little bit. Time for the Tatcha. Now this is not the biggest tube and it's not the cheapest sunscreen, but I don't know about you, finding the perfect mineral sunscreen is a challenge. And this one does have a little bit of a runny consistency to it and a very, very slight white cast, which on my skin, definitely disappears. And it takes me about three finger lengths to get the amount that I need. And then I also let this set up because when you're using a sunscreen, definitely let it set up before you move on to any makeup application. It has to form a film on the skin in order to function properly. And I think I forgot to say this is an SPF 50 mineral sunscreen and it does not pill, which is so exciting because I was so disappointed in the original formula. It pilled terribly and the packaging, the lettering on the packaging would just slip and slide off. This one doesn't do any of that. Absolutely loving it. Even though it is on the expensive side, it is one of the best mineral sunscreens that I've found in 2024. Now on to a little bit of fall minimalist makeup. Bare-faced skin is in. But I know a lot of us, including myself, we want a touch of coverage or a touch of blurring. So use a primer. It will give you that bare-faced look without actually going bare-faced. So I'm gonna use a primer. And today, because I have quite a bit of discoloration in my under eye, I'm going to start with some color correction. What I love about the Stila Correction Palette is it comes with five different cream correctors and two powders. These are so super finely milled. They set beautifully in the under eye area and they are so finely milled, you will not have an issue with caking and creasing at all. I'm gonna use the Angie A506 brush. This has a nice angle to it. It fits beautifully in the under eye area and flat so that you can tap into your color correction and apply it by stippling. And I think that's a great way to apply a color corrector. Just stipple it in, wait a few minutes, let it warm up and sink into the skin. I'm gonna start with yellow to counteract some of that purpling. Then I'm gonna clean my brush. Or actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna go for a smaller brush. See how that's just brightening up the under eye? The excess I'll just put over the lid just to brighten up that. Now I'm going to dip into the green with a smaller brush. I honestly can't read the number on this. I'll put it down below. Just a touch of green because I have this little red spot right there. And I'm going to tap into the green just ever so slightly with this blush brush and color correct the chin area, which for me is always red. Now I'm going to go and deal with the inner corners of my eyes, which are super red, super purple, again with a smaller, tighter brush, just stippling in the corners. I actually have also brought this over the rims of my eyes, which are super red this morning. The allergies get me here in Colorado year round. I just can't beat them. So that does a bit of color correction. Once I set in my blurring primer and do a little bit of translucent powder over them, I will still have a bare faced look without having all that discoloration in my eye area. I always feel this is nice too for a bare faced look because I don't feel like I have to use a shadow or a concealer. So it just gives a touch of perfection to my discoloration without having to go in with a full face of makeup. The blurring primer that I'm gonna use this morning is the one by Tula. It comes out white. As you spread it, it has a slight tint to it. 
I like to tap this in and then as my skin warms up, it will set in, kind of melt together and just form this beautiful face of very light coverage, still keeping on trend with the bare face minimalist look. While this sets up, I'm going to do my lashes. I've been using the Too Faced Better Than Sex. It gives a very nice light coverage for that fluffy lash natural look. Sometimes I'll come in if I get some clumps with my new lash comb. Just kind of helps lift the lashes and get rid of any clumps. Especially since I don't have my glasses on, I can't really see if there are clumps. So just kind of refines that look. The fall look for brows is a fluffy natural brow. I purchased the Hourglass. This is their brow pencil along with the spoolie. And you guys recommended that I pick up the Laura Mercier, but my Sephora didn't have it. So this was my second choice and it's in soft brunette. All the other colors in this were a little bit too warm. And this one seemed to be the one that was a little bit more ashy and kind of set well with my gray hair. So just filling in the sparse areas ever so lightly. No defined brows this fall, no laminated brows. And I go back and forth with my spoolie to kind of get the color even and then just brush them up and over and over to give just a semi-defined look. And if I have a few little sparse areas, I just kind of go back until they fill in. For blush, I'm going to go in with the Cream Tower 28, and the new look for fall is to bring your blush up under the eye area. And I will blend this out ever so slightly, and then I will powder down with the Stilla Correction Powder. Now the under eye blush trend, and it's gonna look a little crazy until I get this blended out, so don't panic. The under eye blush trend is not necessarily new, but it's a great tip to sort of camouflage the definition between our cheek area and our under eye area, especially as you mature, the under eye gets a little bit hollower. And if you blend all your complexion products, including your blush up a little bit higher, it just sort of blends that demarcation between the under eye trough and the cheek. I'm gonna blend that in a little bit. Just set my under eye with a very light dusting of the Stilla Yellow setting powder. And just really light, just to kind of set things in and brighten things up. So that just brightened up the eye, blended everything in. Now for lips, I've been using the RMS Beauty in Bare. Super hydrating, just gives a touch of a pink flush to my lips. The only thing is I wish it didn't come in this tube. I think it would be so much more efficient if they repackaged this into a product that you just apply like a lip balm. So a little bit frustrated by the packaging, but love the real bare-faced look that it gives. Just a little bit of flush to the lips without looking overdone. That's my morning skincare done and a little bit of minimalist makeup. I'm off to get my hair cut. I'll show you that when I get back and we'll move on to my evening skincare routine. Haircut done. Now I'm going to share with you the fall evening skincare routine that I started about two weeks ago. I haven't had a chance to do my LED red light therapy today, so I'm going to be doing that right after my double cleanse. The mask that I'm using is the Prana Mask by Mysalma. It's a new mask that I'm trying. I've tucked away my Omnilux mask, which I used for years, and I'm trying this new mask, and it has three features that the Omnilux mask doesn't have. Number one, it covers the upper lip area. Number two, you can choose the option of pulsed light. There are some clinical in-house studies that have shown that pulsed light can help your products absorb better. Now, the third option I think a lot of you are gonna appreciate, besides the fact that it covers the upper lip, which many masks do not, is you can choose red light. Red light plus near infrared light 
and magenta light. So it treats a variety of skin concerns. Now, as with all skincare devices, you wanna make sure that you have checked all the contraindications and make sure that this is a device that's going to be suited for your particular skin condition and not be contraindicated for any health concerns. For my first cleanse to get rid of all the makeup and all the sunscreen, I've been using the Naturium Balm Cleanser. This is a ginseng and lin linoleic acid cleanser breaks up all the sunscreen, breaks up all the makeup, rinses off beautifully, and it emulsifies really well. It's a very basic cleanser and it's not very expensive. Love it. And I've been coming in with a second cleanse using the Dermatology Goat Cleanser. I love this cleanser. If you have dry skin, if you have dehydrated skin, if you have sensitive skin, you are going to love this. It is actually my favorite cleanser of 2024 so far. You don't need very much. It's super concentrated. It doesn't burn my eyes. It doesn't irritate my skin. It doesn't strip my skin. I honestly can't say enough about this cleanser. Really enjoying this. And I know it's going to be on my repurchase list for dermatology. After I'm cleansed and I have a clean slate, I put on a couple pumps of the Mysama Green Robos Press Serum. I know a lot of you who use LED red light therapy love the serum as I do for boosting the effects of your LED red light therapy session. This has clinical evidence that shows it increases the benefits of LED red light by, I can't remember if it's two or three times. I'm going to put the little table up here. If you haven't had a chance to read that study, it's a quick read and absolutely fascinating how Green Robo's Tea can boost our LED red light therapy benefits. Now in the evening, I'll use the serum. If I'm doing LED red light in the morning, I've been using the new Mysama Green Robo's Press Serum Mist. Now this is a lot easier to use in the morning if you're going to layer skincare on top of it and then do a little bit of makeup. Super easy to use, a quick light mist, dries down really quickly compared to the serum, which actually is more nourishing. But in the morning, I end up toweling this off because I don't like the tint of it. It kind of interferes with the rest of my makeup application. So I've been reserving this for the evening and then using their new mist for the morning. I think they may have heard little birds chirping to say, please make something a little lighter weight with no tint. And this is what they've come out with. Absolutely brilliant launch by my son. After cleansing and doing my red light therapy session, I've been coming in with the eye cream. It's the same eye cream by One Skin that I've been using in my morning routine. I use it morning and evening. It's supposed to help with the creepiness around the eye area and the crow's feet area. I'm doing a trial for you guys, just like I mentioned in my morning routine, and I use it twice a day. After my eye cream, and sometimes before it, sometimes I switch these treatment steps because I consider what I'm using around my eye area a treatment as well. I've actually substituted the One Skin eye treatment for the HPR, the Hydropinacolone Retinoate. This is a vitamin A product that was released by Dermatology last year for improving the look of the under eye. So I've put that aside. I've added this in. For my treatment step, I use a serum that's addressing my current skincare concerns. Right now, that's pigment. And so I'm using Remedy's Dark Spot formula. I love this. You cannot imagine how many pigment fighters are in this one particular formula, in addition to a vitamin A derivative retinol. So this is the serum that I use on my retinol nights. I'm putting aside tretinoin for a little while while I finish this up. I have been having such sensitive skin that I'm back to a retinol product. Now for some people, retinol can still be sensitizing and irritating, but this does not irritate my skin at all. The pigment fighters in here are malic acid, which exfoliates and helps with discoloration, kojic acid, which targets dark spots. It also has glutathione, which targets dark spots, licorice root, which I've talked about before, targets dark spots. Tranexamic acid, also spoken about before as one of those hero ingredients that helps with dark spots. Niacinamide, that all-time goodie that brightens the skin, helps repair the barrier, and addresses dark spots. And last but not least, acetylglucosamine, which is a new ingredient to me that promotes even skin tone. This is packed full of almost every ingredient that I can think of besides malastasin to help with pigmentation. So I've been using this as my vitamin A, and sometimes I'll buffer it with One Skin, which has been my evening moisturizer lately, but this is actually so gentle that I can put it on right after I finish my LED red light therapy treatment. So I pump this on, 
And then I've been coming in with the malastasin right after this because it's the one ingredient that helps with dark spots that's in my routine that isn't in this little bottle. So I get my vitamin A and all my dark spot correctors in here with a boost of the malastasin formula by Mother Science. So that's if I'm doing a retinoid night. On the nights that I don't use a vitamin A treatment, I use an exfoliating treatment. Two that I've been reaching for lately are the one that I've talked about for quite a long time. This is the Dermalect Sleep Serum. It actually has vitamin C, AHAs, and BHAs. So it is an all-tasking exfoliator. I would recommend anyone starting a new active formula for exfoliation, do a patch test. Exfoliating a couple times a week can really transform mature skin. I might even go so far as to say as the exfoliation treatment, in addition to adding a vitamin A into my routine in the evening, has transformed my skin, except for maybe sunscreen, more than any other product I've added to my mature skincare routine. And if you haven't seen my video on how to build an anti-aging skincare routine, I'll link that up above. Now, the second product I was sharing that I use on my neck area by Dermalect is a very gentle exfoliating treatment that's designed for the neck area. This is their self-esteem neck serum. I use it a couple times a week just to gently help with discoloration and gently help with exfoliating the skin of the neck, getting rid of that creepiness. The skin on our neck and decollete is so thin that a gentle formula is the way you wanna go. Again, because this is an active formula, definitely do a patch test. For my decollete, I've been doing an anti-pigmentation formula that has 6% hydroquinone. This also has kojic acid, it has Arbutin and Emblica, all designed to help combat dark spots. And these are just little pads that have been soaked in these ingredients. And this is compounded at my dermatologist's office. After I finish up these compounded pads from my dermatologist's office and take my break from hydroquinone, I'm going to be switching, as I mentioned in a couple videos ago, to agency. You guys have talked about agency, how much you love it, how easy it is to just order it online for your anti-aging skincare concerns. So I've jumped over to agency for a little while to test it out. It may be a permanent change, we'll have to see. So after I do my decollete, I put on moisturizer, from brow to decollete, and I'm using the One Skin Moisturizer. If I'm doing an evening where I'm doing my exfoliation treatment by Dermalect, I also put this moisturizer on over it, but I let it dry down a bit. So this, again, is the same formula that I'm using in the morning, and the way they recommend using it is twice a day. So I can see if there's an actual difference in a couple months using the formula as recommended. The final step in my evening skincare routine is optional for me. Sometimes I use a facial oil and sometimes I don't. So that is also going to depend on your skin condition. Often in the drier months, I tend to use a facial oil. I'll either use the one that I'm currently using from True Botanicals or a few drops of castor oil. And I did a video on castor oil when it was really hot a few months ago. I'll link that up above if you're curious about it. I found it to be a great addition to my evening skincare routine. I usually let all my skincare soak in for at least a couple hours and I put it on right before I go to bed. A few drops, just swish it in my hands, super light layer, and just pat it on. I've also been using it on my hands and my feet just to soften the skin. It is actually quite amazing the difference that a little bit of castor oil has done to the condition of my nail beds, both on my hands and my feet and my heels. My heels don't crack anymore. And honestly, if I just do that very basic thin layer, I love it as an occlusive facial oil, but I do let my skincare dry down before I add that on. It's basically the last step that I do right before I go to bed. And if I get that thin layer on, it really doesn't feel very heavy and I don't have any problem transferring to my sheets. It just sort of soaks into my skin. But again, remember, I have very, very dry skin. Basically, my skin doesn't produce oil. It never has, I don't, it never will. And it's even worse since I've hit menopause. That's everything that I'm currently using in my morning and my evening fall skincare routine. Let me know if you're trying some new products, what you're liking and what you're finding that works as your skin changes and as you move into fall. Also, let me know, do you change up your skincare for fall and winter and spring and summer? 
would love to know what you're doing to take care of your mature over 50 skin. For those of you who are just starting your skincare routine in your 50s and you need some tips, I'm going to link right here in the watch next button, my beginner skincare guide. So check that out. If you're new to skincare, it can be super overwhelming. So go check that out. Thanks very much for watching and wishing you guys a skintastic day.